Members of over 100 tribes gathered Saturday night to celebrate over 100 years of American Indian culture at the American Indian Student Association's annual powwow. While some rattlesnake roundups throughout Oklahoma and Texas deal with animal cruelty yeah, towards rattlesnakes, the Sweetwater chases focus more on education and safety. Brown says that in the event of another power outage, the reserve is working on a technology that will keep residents informed and updated via text message. He hopes that technology will be available within the next month. Brittany Belli, OU Nightly. Sweetwater, Texas is where over 3,000 pounds of western diamondback rattlesnakes go to die each year. But members of the Sweetwater Jaycees, the organization that hosts the Rattlesnake Roundup, say animal cruelty is not on their agenda. But I know I've seen pictures of stuff where they sew their mouth shut and stuff like that, and we're not into that. We don't believe in it, we will not do it. Rattlesnake Roundup participants compare their actions to bringing an animal to slaughter or any other hunting trip. See this as a cruelty to an animal, not any more than a mouse trap is to a mouse as far as cruelty. As far as taking a cow to a slaughterhouse, is that cruelty? It's like dad and son skinning their first deer out. For those worried about the large number of snakes hunted each year, Terry Hollywood Armstrong says female western diamondbacks can breed up to 30 babies a year and that this species is in no danger of becoming extinct. And you know, a lot of people say we're taking a lot of snakes out. What we get, what what we get in the roundups in Texas doesn't even equal to the road kill, the snakes that are killed on the road every year. While some rattlesnake roundups throughout Oklahoma and Texas deal with animal yeah, cruelty towards true, rattlesnakes, no the Sweetwater Chasers focus more on education and safety. Hollywood has always been passionate about rattlesnake safety, but back in 2005. A little girl in Sweetwater got bit by a western diamondback and almost died. Since then, Hollywood has made it his passion to educate people, especially children, about the dangers of rattlesnakes. I want to teach a five-year-old kid that it's okay to palm a snake, what they call by palm, pick a snake up or stick one on my head, or it's okay to walk around them or throw them on, or lay them on top of myself. Reporting from Sweetwater, Texas, Brittany Belli, Oh, you nightly. Members of over 100 tribes gathered Saturday night to celebrate over 100 years of American Indian culture at the American Indian Student Association's annual powwow. From little kids to elders, everyone was dancing and singing. But Native Americans say their focus is on passing their culture down to their children. That's, that's the main reason I come to Pow Wow. You see the young people sitting around the drum and children that can barely walk out in the arena dancing and thanks to their parents and their grandparents, they're learning the songs that way and it makes me feel good. I like that. Well, we want our children to learn our culture, our language, our ways. Um, so we have to immerse them. They have to dance, they have to sing. and It's a big part of our different tribe cultures. Warren Wheaton has been attending powwows since he was two. He's built lifelong friendships from those early days and knows Native American children will too. I know they're going to do the same thing. They're going to meet Indian friends and they're going to, they're going to carry those relationships on into uh, adulthood. In addition to sharing culture, Wheaton says that powwows also have a positive influence on younger tribe members. They could be somewhere else, you know, especially our teenagers. You know, they could be out on the street, get into mischief. But a lot of teenagers come to powwows because it's a good environment to be in, a family environment. Native Americans hope that people of all cultures can learn something from powwows and that they can help eliminate negative stereotypes. Brittany Belli, OU Night.
Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. And a few weeks ago, that wind was strong enough to knock out the power at one Norman apartment complex. And so, like, I get up, and I'm like, okay, this is really dark in the apartment, like, darker than usual. I was like, this is kind of weird. However, residents and staff at the reserve on Stinson weren't surprised at what happened. So I go on and, like, try to turn my coffee maker on, and when it didn't come on, I was just like, oh, going back to bed. <laughs> I mean, I have, I'm in the house, and power goes off. It's just kind of a way of life. Like, it happens. You can't really do much about it. Rachel Rudabach, a resident at the reserve, says she was more surprised at how strong the wind was. Because when I got home that night, the wind was unbelievable. Like, I, it, I almost half expected, like, cars to go rolling down the parking lot because the wind was just so strong. Like, I, I think in all the years that I've lived in Oklahoma, like, I was born and raised here, and I've, I've never experienced wind, like, that strong. That wasn't, like, tornado-like. This is the first time the reserve has lost power since the 2007 ice storm. Brown says he doesn't anticipate more power outages, but he's not sure what Oklahoma weather will bring. Oklahoma weather is so unpredictable. Brown says that in the event of another power outage, the reserve is working on a technology that will keep residents informed and updated via text message. He hopes that technology will be available within the next month. Brittany Belli, OU Knightley.